Hey everybody, so today we're going to be working on this Marshall JCM800. This is the two channel version, the model 2210. Yes, with the solid state diode clipping in the circuit. This one came in with the blown HT fuse. So we're definitely going to fix that problem. The client also said they wanted new tubes in this bad boy, so we will do that as well. So let's see what we're working with here. First thing I'm noticing, it's got the original LCR caps here. Second thing I've noticed, so right off the bat, Look at this wire, these wires here, this here. All this stuff looks like shit. So <laughs> this is not this is not original. Look at this. It's just cut. It's not heat shrink, it's not taped off, nothing. They've got all this excess wire in here. So just from you can tell just by the way these wires are run, that these transformers, the output and the power transformer have been replaced. Who knows, man, this thing might not have needed new transformers at all. That just looks so shitty that I'm going to have to do something about it. Just some other stuff here. I mean, you see how these, these wires for the reverb tank, look, at, they're running parallel, like right alongside these heater wires. Like, you've got you to do something about that. The voltage selector has been replaced. All the markings here have been scratched off. Likely, that means that this was an impedance selector and they didn't have the correct the correct one. Now, if this were a restoration job, bam, I would put this original piece back in here. This came off another amplifier. I've actually got three of these. I don't think the guy has asked me to do anything like that. I told him more than likely I would just take this selector switch completely out of the circuit. There's no reason to have a selector switch. I don't think anybody's going to be flying with this amp anytime soon. I mean, shit, the last time I was in Japan, they had marshals there. Australia, too. I don't see a situation where you're going to need a selector switch in the first place. This thing is never going to leave the United States, and if it does, you can just as easily open it up. Holy fucking moly, look at that. Look at how much that wire is just hanging on there. Not like a couple of threads. This, this has got the original LCR caps. Those have got to go, straight up. We'll replace those, we'll tighten up this wire in here. We'll replace these electrolytics, these big filter caps. We're gonna replace the ones on the circuit board too. And after that, I think we'll be in good shape. Let's see what kind of tubes I got here. The tubes that were in this amp, they're not all the same. And the two ones that are actually Mesa branded look like they're in pretty rough shape. I don't know if you can see the plates on these guys here, but look at the difference in color on these two. So this one here has likely red plated and just completely burned out. That would explain your that would explain your blown HT fuse for sure. I've read a lot of comments on my page and other people's pages about that we're just replacing electrolytics that don't need to be replaced. But that, that is a fucking that is a complete crock of shit. The dielectric compound within the capacitor dries out over time. It's not a question of if, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. It happened. The amp is damn near 40 years old. I'm not going through the hassle of putting all these caps through an ESR meter. I know they're old, they gotta go. It's not hard, and it's not expensive. So why would you not want your amplifier to be bulletproof? You're not changing the tone of anything by making sure you have the correct components, correct working components in place. Also, take a look at these heater wires here, these two black ones. That one is actually melted underneath this resistor. If we tidy this up, we can make this amp quieter. I mean, I don't know how loud it's going to be. You know, I don't know how much it hums now, because we obviously haven't been able to power it on. I'm not going to turn on an amp in this condition. We're going to have to fix a lot of this stuff before we test anything. So this is actually the center, this wire is the center tab. I got a spec sheet off of this transformer, it's just an MPT100, very common uh, electroharmonic sells them. As far as I know, they're fine transformers, but you know the wiring could be better off. Obviously, you got to fix that. This is not just going to hang out here, we're going to figure something out. I know the guy did, I know he didn't ask for it, but I want to go ahead, I want to put this, this switch in. I mean, we could just rig this thing up bypass this switch all together, but I don't like that. Let's go ahead and put the period correct one back in place. Go from there. All right, so I've got a bunch of wires loose over here. Just redone some of the heaters. 
So that's interesting here. You got this, which may very well be stock. I've, I gotta admit, I've never seen it. This is the first underside of one of these I've seen. So let's go ahead and take a look at some schematics and see if we can verify this piece and these two caps right here. I, just seems like an odd place for them. All this stuff is stock. Double check the schematics there in the schematics as well. So I guess we don't have to worry about this stuff until we can. Get started on changing out these parts. All right, something else we're gonna do to this amplifier here is right here, I R47 and R46. R46 goes over to this control here, which is a DI output control. I don't know anybody that's ever used this DI output. It's a pretty useless feature on these amps. I've tried to use it. I've never come up with a good reason to utilize a control like this. But I don't really want to alter the topology of this thing too much. You know, I want to keep it as true in stock form as possible. So if you look at a JCM 800 single channel from uh, 1984 and beyond, they do have a DI as well. What I'm gonna do with this knob, I'm gonna take this out and replace this with a, with a resonance control. This is gonna give the amp a lot more thump and a lot more bass in the power section. I mean, the bass isn't gonna be muddy either. I mean, it's a nice, powerful, strong low end that you can dial in and out. I think it really, really helps this amp out a lot called the owner up, gave him the heads up, he gave me the go ahead to do it. Let's, let's rip this puppy out. So what we've done is I've taken loose, this is the pot that was there, took that out, I put a one mag pot here with a .0047 microfarad capacitor. This was the wire, this pink one was the wire going to this pot. We've taken that off and really all we have to do is just put this pink wire right here on the jack. So the purple wire coming off the board, we'll put that on this new one meg pot. And then I've already run another wire from the pot back to the four ohm tap on the impedance selector switch. Uh, the schematic shows that the negative feedback is on the four ohm tap, so we're just gonna leave it there. One of the last things that's really bothering me is just, just the sheer amount of times everything is crossing over these heaters. I'm going to undo this, uh, these two wires that are going to the transformer for the reverb section. I don't know why they're kind of up and wrapped all the way around this stuff. They're going right alongside these heaters. That's going to pick up some harm. If I just redo that and lift these up, that could alleviate that. And then there are this first stage here. I might be able to move these heaters a little bit. I did replace this voltage selector switch here with uh, the period correct one. I don't know, I had a couple lying around and it just bothered me not to have the correct one in there. We really could have just hardwired this thing for 120 and been fine, but I figured why not maybe add some value back to this amp. You know, we cleaned up the wires here for the output transformer. I've added one ohm resistors to all of the output tube sockets that way I can read the bias you can see I've already got a couple probes hooked up here one to read the plate voltage and one to read the uh, bias there I redid a lot of this heater wiring before it was just kind of going all over the place and I tried to tidy it up as much as possible see how the heater wire goes across the tube socket and not over and around I didn't do it on this one because it's not crossing over anything but I did it to these 
you know, these are just some uh, ground wires here, but I was really trying to get the heater wires away from these free verb wires here, and especially they crossed over these grid wires a bunch of different places, and I was just trying to minimize that as much as possible. I've got new Electro Harmonics 6CA7 tubes. All right, so we've got all our meters hooked up here. Uh, everything seems like it's good, so let's go ahead and turn the power on here. Usually let it warm up a little bit longer, but we'll go ahead and just get it warm. So it looks like I've got about 460 volts on the plate here. 25 divided by 460. So I've got about 37 milliamps, 38 milliamps right now, or I should say 38 millivolts on the uh, tube. If you bias at 70%, 38 is pretty much right there. We could go lower, maybe 60%, be at like 32, or if we split the difference, 65%, we're at 35 uh, millivolts. But I'm fine with 70. I think Marshall sound pretty good right there, 70% of idle current. Uh, let's go ahead and plug a guitar up to this thing and see if we can get some juice. I turned the thing on and uh, everything sounded okay and I was getting this little hum when I would turn the uh, reverb up. But these wires, yeah, you can see it right there. The wires go into this, this reverb right here are broken. The green one is still connected on the other side, but the black one's broken on both sides. I don't think we should replace the tank. I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and fix this one. So let's see how to do that. Let's see. Let's check out our reverb. Check out, make sure the channel switching works. too long because it sounds kind of unusable if it's that if it's that rich. I'm gonna leave it like that I'm just gonna glue that piece of foam down in there and so last thing I'm gonna do on this before I box it up now this is now this is stock we didn't modify anything except for that resonance control but when I turn this gain all the way up it's 
hard to hear, but it's that shh, it's that wash. It goes away right there. Really obvious if I stand like this. We can use a plate bypass cap lower that effect here. So, right, so if you notice that high end hiss, I've got the gain turned all the way up. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but it's, it's subdued a little bit. If I take, so a lot of that just came back. So I've got a thousand picofarad capacitor over R, R7. So to tame some of that high end oscillation, we just added this 1000 picofarad capacitor across R7, which is a plate resistor for one of these uh, gain stages here. Tried to tidy up this wiring as good as I could. I didn't want to have to take everything loose and turn the transformer around because I think in order to do it the way I wanted to, I would have had to have done that to get some of these wires from crisscrossing so many times and to kind of just make it a little bit neater. But we're still way better off than where we started. Uh, you'll notice I put back an original uh, voltage selector here. Wired, uh, cleaned up this. This was all kind of flopping around over here. All of these uh, wires for the output section. And here is where we replaced a 4.7K pot with a one meg pot and put a 0.0047 uh, microfarad capacitor across this pot here and that is our resonance control. No major modifications to the circuit. This DI jack still works if for some reason you'd want to use it. All it's doing is it's like this knob is on 10. So the single channel 800s do not have a control knob for the DI jack. So essentially it's wired basically the same pretty happy with the results. As far as us taming the reverb section, is I just took a small piece of foam and just glued it down right in the middle there. It just shortens the decay time a little bit. It's, it's very finicky uh, to get it just right. This can easily be pulled and modified if you want. Put these last finishing touches on here. Uh, the Tolex was coming up just a little bit on this edge here, so I just super glued that and put a clamp down on it with a, something flat to try and, uh, try and get that to stick, not pop up. Yeah, this was his, because this one had that dent in it, so I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll have to hammer that out. I think I can hand bend this. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell. Alright, that's pretty good without putting it in any kind of machinery. Well, there we go. There's a Marshall 2210 back in action. And uh, the owner of this lamp said this used to be owned by one of the guys in Quicksand. And it was on a Quicksand record. Oh, shit. It's missing a screw for the handle. Just when I thought you could walk away from this thing. Okay, looks like a little one screw. I think we got something like this. Let's go hunt. Uh, if the wood is stripped out right there anyway. So what I can do is I can repair that hole. So I really wanted to put a microphone in this thing to make sure you guys really, really hear the difference that this uh, resonance or depth control makes. You know, again, it's just a very simple mod. It does not change the character of the amp in any way. It just really gets that low end oomph that I feel like the amp kind of needs. I mean, it sounds great without it, but with it, I, 
it definitely adds some punch. So here's the settings on the amp. Presence all the way down. Uh, volume is really only up to about one. It's still, still really loud. Reverb, barely on. Uh, bass on six, middle on about nine o'clock, or I should say eight. Middle on eight, treble about five. The uh, boost volume all the way up, gain all the way up. So here's with the resonance all the way down, so this is pretty much out of the circuit. <laughs> sounds phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. We didn't really change the circuit topology at all. You know, we cleaned up that heater wire, we added that resonance control. So overall I'm pretty happy with the results. I think the customer will be too. Let me know what you guys think about that resonance control in the comments. Let me know if you think it was a positive improvement to the tone of the amp. I think it's added plenty of balls and that effect will be more substantial the higher you go in volume. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.